Welcome to Paltrix Tech Lightning. Today, I will talk about an important framework to bring your business into Azure, namely the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. A seasoned architect will already be using the principle described herein. However, it's also important that you're able to articulate and explain what the Cloud Adoption Framework is and how you have used it in your deployment. This helps you explain the design decisions that you've made to your customer and also demonstrates that you have followed the industry best practices. So let's dive into it. Here we go. The Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, CEF, is a collection of documentation, implementation guidance, best practices, and tools to bring a business into Azure. It guides the business through the whole process, where it starts by analyzing the business requirements and where the benefit of the Azure Cloud lies. In other words, it prepares the business and provides guidance in the entire cloud journey. The Cloud Adoption Framework, it contains several different phases in the Cloud Adoption journey. You will find the overview on the Microsoft website. All links are available in the description of this video. Here you can see the different phases with the Get Started guidelines. The Get Started phase explains how Azure work with the different services. I'm talking then about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and more. It goes a bit in detail as well into different cloud adoption scenarios. Are you thinking about putting cloud applications in the cloud? What about desktop virtualization? Hybrid and multi-cloud? Do you want to move to SAP? As you can see, there are several scenarios which are supported. One interesting aspect is that the Microsoft list anti-patterns here. Now those are missteps which commonly occur in the design planning or implementation when migrating to the cloud. In this table, you can see an overview of the different anti-patterns and which phase also known as methodology they refer to. An interesting anti-pattern found under the adopt methodology and named use a single subscription. Opening the link give up the reasoning as to why a single subscription may not be a good idea for all the workload. Companies can quickly run into subscription limits, which means they then have to redesign the architecture. It describes the preferred outcome of using a segmentation strategy with multiple subscriptions. Let's get back to the overview and look at the different phases and take a look at the next phase. The strategy phase. Now this talks about the motivations as to why you're moving to the cloud. It guides and ensures that you will meet the business outcomes while considering the financial and technical situation. The main idea is to actually show you the benefits and improve the business agility, scale out and in, disaster recovery and backups, and much more. You reduce costs, so you pay only for what you use. You accelerate time to market, infrastructure as code in order to get your environment quickly ready. To document the business strategy effectively, the following guidelines are described. You have to define and document your motivations. Uh, you have a meeting with key stakeholders and executives to document these motivations as to why the business is moving to the cloud. Secondly, uh, you have to document the business outcome. It's very important that stakeholders and executives of a company work to document the business outcome. How much money will you save on the cloud journey? How will it improve the IT landscape? One way can be, for example, better availability and more responsiveness of an application. Thirdly, you evaluate the financial considerations. How can we make the IT cost structure more cost efficient? Perhaps we can remove the test environment when it's not required, then rebuild it with a click of a button to have it available when we need it. Four, you understand the technical considerations. You dive into the technical benefits such as scalability, availability, while meeting all the security and compliance requirements. We will be now moving on to the next phase, the plan phase. This is where a thorough inventory of the assets, including applications, software, hardware, operating system is created. This will then be able to help you identify which workloads and environments are suitable for the cloud. One of the most important aspects of moving to the cloud is to actually ensure that the people in your organization are ready for it. Microsoft, they recommend to have at least two teams which are accountable for this the cloud adoption and the cloud governance. The cloud adoption team, they're the ones that are responsible for implementing the cloud adoption tasks. 
The Cloud Governance Team, now this is a team responsible to control and ensure the Cloud Adoption Team follows and meets all required standards for deployment. An interesting part is that Microsoft, they guide you how to realign your existing IT staff into the Cloud areas. Here are some of the traditional IT roles, such as Solution Manager, UI, UX Designer, Tester, Developer, Network Engineer, and more. They map to new roles within the Cloud. For example, the Network Engineer can go into Cloud Architect with a focus on security and the networking team part. A developer can fit well into an engineering and DevOps position for a Cloud environment. The Cloud Adoption Plan, it focuses on building your plan in concrete step. It goes through the prerequisites, to define and prioritize the workload and finishes off with the estimation of the timelines. In addition, there's a template called Azure DevOps Demo Generator. This is an interesting tool which deploys a template to your Azure DevOps tenant. It has sample content which include source code, work items, iterations and service connections. In addition, this phase also gives you a good overview of the different tools to assess your migration. In the table here, you see the different tools are listed, such as Data Migration Assistant. This check for compatibility issues in database functionality. We have the Azure Migration. So how can you use this to assess the on-premise VMs and provides a size and cost estimates for running it in Azure? Service Map, which in its turn shows the dependencies between the different machines the company wants to migrate. Then we have the ready phase, which is all about creating the initial landing zone and make it ready to host the workload. This phase has several steps to guide you through the process. We have the cloud operation model. This explains how you should operate the technology in the cloud itself. In the cloud, you shift your focus from hardware that you maintain to actual digital assets. Azure landing zones. Here we go through the Azure landing zone setup. How many subscriptions are suitable for your environment? The Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone uh, makes up the part of this one. So in addition, there's something called Azure Landing Zone Accelerator. It's a conceptual architecture where you deploy an initial empty landing zone with a click of a button. And you, of course, after the click, you have to fill out an extensive form in order for the landing zone. But after that, you will have an initial Azure infrastructure set up. The journey to the target architecture. So it's actually about validating your starting point and ensure you're compliant for the migration. Azure Landing Zone Design Areas. This is all about the process and guidance for designing your Azure Landing Zone. Looking at the next phase, we have Migrate. We're not talking about migrating one or a small collection of workloads to Azure. This is actually part of the adopt pillar of the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. It's all about assessing to see if the workload is a technical fit for the cloud. Then it goes into performing an actual migration, but uh, by replicating the on-premise resources to Azure. It shows you the tools which are required for, to control costs in the cloud. This also has to do with optimizing the cost, of course, to ensure you do not overspend. It has a big section on best practices, which also gives you a good insight and ideas how to perform the migration. Among many things, it describes how to migrate VMware virtual machines, SQL server migration, and much more, as you can see. Following the migrate, we come to the innovate phase. Just like the previous phase, this one belongs to the adopt pillar of the cloud adoption framework. It explains in detail on how to innovate with the cloud technologies to provide a better value. It has good questions here, such as, what is the defined customer need that you're trying to address with the cloud? What opportunities would this solution create for your business? Which business outcomes are achieved with this solution? Interestingly enough, it also gives you the strategy on how to handle this part. A very important phase is the security part. Moving to the cloud is also an ongoing journey and maturity of security. It's not a static move that you can complete and just leave. So this guides you through and helps you map the concepts, frameworks and standards required. Zero Trust is an important pillar here, and Microsoft have thorough processes published on their website as how to implement this in Azure. There are best security practices described in this section. It describes in detail the ASB, which is the Azure Security Benchmark, and how you implement these controls. 
For each section, there are guidance and list of tools how you handle that part. As you can see in this list, there are many, many sections. Network security, identity management, privilege access, data protection, and many more. Up next is the manage phase. This is all about the ongoing operation of the digital assets that are running in Azure. Once you have implemented infrastructure, it needs to be properly managed. A good example of that is that not all the workload remain business critical through a life cycle. You will need to, for example, to be able to work in an agile way to adapt and manage this. As with many other phases, there's also a best practices section here. So here's some additional information and tools such as Azure Server Management. Now this is an onboarding guide to incorporate cloud native tools which are required uh, for the platform and applications. You have the hybrid monitoring and some customers are heavily invested into existing monitoring solutions such as System Center Operations Manager. Hybrid monitoring helps them compare and contra contrast the different cloud native tools. This now brings us to the last piece of the cloud adoption framework, namely the govern. Here we focus on cloud governance and making sure existing policies are followed and met. But not only that, it's important to be aware that the cloud estate changes over time and so does the governance. This is why it's important to ensure the cloud governance is also able to change and work in an agile way. There are four steps defined on how to handle governance. One, you establish your method methodology. It's all about understanding what drives cloud governance and to think about the end state solution. Two, use government benchmark tools. This tool can assess your current state and project it into a future state for you to apply the framework. Three, establish an initial governance foundation. Start small with an easy set of governance tool, MVP, minimal viable product is applicable here. You have four. You improve your initial governance foundation. It's important that you go through the governance controls through the cloud adoption journey. You need to stay flexible, address risks and changes as you progress towards the end state. That's all I had today for the cloud adoption journey. Speaking of the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. So what you need to remember is that this is a framework that will guide the business into the cloud. It starts with the business case and ends with the implementation and governance of the environment. Until next time, take care. See you.